Now, when I say LIP, I mean a local integration process, okay? So when I was showing you the processes, <laughs> there were uh, two independent process. One is your integration process and the second is your local integration process. And third was the exception sub process, which we saw. Now, sub process is always a part of the process, right? So wherever you build your main flow, that is your integration process. But if you want to divide your integration flow into multiple small parts so that it is easier to read, easier to handle the exception, um, easy to troubleshoot, what you do is you define a local integration process and call it from main integration process. <laughs> what does that mean? So if you are aware about the coding, okay, when something is repetitively used, what do you do? You create a function and whenever that function is used, you'll just call that function, right? So let's say you want to use split method, but split by default is not available in the language. What you will do is you will create a function of split that, okay, th these are my arguments A and B. And whenever I call this function split, take these input uh, as arguments and split my string or do whatever, right? It's in the similar way you do a local integration process in CI. First of all, how do you create and call a local integration process? And then we'll see uh, how can you like efficiently use a local integration process in your real-time scenarios. So you drive a local integration process. First of all, it's an independent process. You, so you can't drop it inside your integration process. It has to be created separately. It can't work inside an integration process. It starts with a start event and it ends with an end event. What does that mean is that uh, wherever you will call this local integration process, it will take the exact same payload which is present while you are calling this, uh, this uh, local integration process. And whatever happens inside this local integration process, after it ends, it will resume your main eye flow. Okay, so for example, I call a local integration process here. How do I call a local integration process? There is a palette called as process call. Process call, okay? So what's the functionality of process call? It's just a function to call your local integration process, right? So wherever I use process call, I can call this local integration process. Now I can have 10 things defined in this local integration process. So let's say, I have a content modifier, I have ah, a converter, I have a request reply, and I have a receiver that is for this request reply. Now, can one iFlow only have uh, one local integration process? What do you think? It can be more. It can be more. Then how will your process call know that at what point of time which local integration process to call? So let's say there is another local integration process and one of your local integration process name is call API. So let's say you are calling API in this and in this you say you are saying create order. Okay. These are the two local integration processes in your whole integration. Now one process call you have to do let's say here. So I want to call my create, uh, sorry, call API process uh, from here and I want to call my create order from here. How would my process call know that which local integration process to call? Okay, we need to mention that names in the process calls. Correct. So if you'll configure the options of uh, process calls in the processing, you have to tell which local integration process you need to call. 